Hello, I'm Nigel Griffiths. I work in the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK, part of IBM Europe. In this movie we're going to look at Partition Availability Priority. This is a new Power 6 feature. The Power 6 processor already has a lot of inbuilt capability to protect itself from faults, to retry instructions and to move a failed processor environment state to another processor to rerun instruction. So in the unlikely event of a CPU failure, this allows you as the systems administrator to decide which logical partitions are really important, you want them to carry on running, and which logical partitions can be sacrificed and in which order. OK, so how do we set it actually up? Now if this wasn't so extremely well hidden in our HMC, we probably wouldn't need a movie at all. So I have a uh, HMC7 here, and um, we have two servers, this die and nag machines. We're looking at the nag machine, there's a bunch of logical partitions here. Uh, the first one up here is a VIO server, so that's fairly important. I have some unimportant things, I have an old uh, 5.2 LPAR here, it's not actually up at the moment. Um, and I have a, a SUSE LPAR in here that uh, only use it sometimes. Then I have um, some AIX6 logical partitions in here that I'm using for uh, demonstrations all the time and there are some other bits and pieces that I use for development. So I have uh, my clear understanding of which I think are more important and which are less important. So how do I actually set the partition priority? Well the first thing to note is that it's nothing to do with this panel at all. If we have to go back up to this servers level, then we have a list of the servers connected to our HMC and it's a machine level function. So I click on the machine here to select it. We can see down here under configuration we have partition availability priority. Or I can go in here and configuration and partition availability priority. So here are my same logical partitions on this machine. And uh, stretch this out a little bit here we have the priority in the column here. Now by default it's made everything uh, 127 which is uh, default but do notice that it's made the virtual I.O. server a little bit more important than those because the virtual I.O. server is uh, supporting multiple logical partitions so it makes sense to keep that running. Now then these two partitions here are my low priority ones, they're not actually even switched on at the moment you can see they're taking those CPU values so in here I can have I can type in a number if I want to or I can just make these uh, low priority and I'll do an update okay now my VIO server um, all my partitions apart from this X5.2 which is dedicated are actually VIO server clients so click those two and uh, I want to make that absolutely top dog priority I'll update that and then my two AX6 partitions, because I give demonstrations on these, I want to keep these running, I'll make those high priority. And don't forget to OK that to actually put the new settings in. So we've assigned the priorities to our logical partitions. How does this help the hypervisor decide what to do when we have a CPU failure? Well, if we have an unallocated CPU, so it's a capacity upgrade on demand type CPU, we can immediately allocate that and use that. If we haven't got one of those, then we're going to start with the lowest priority logic partition first. And if that's a dedicated CPU partition, we will dynamically take a CPU out of that logic partition or shut it down if necessary and use that CPU. If the lowest priority logical partition has a shared CPU, then what happens depends on whether taking a whole CPU out of that logical partition, does it get us below the minimum for that logical partition? If the answer is no, we'll go ahead and do that. If the answer is yes, then we'll skip this shared CPU logical partition and continue on to the next lowest. We carry on going through our priority list, but if we still fail to find a CPU that we can reallocate, 
what we'll do is we'll shut down enough shared CPU logical partitions to release a whole CPU and then we're okay. So what would happen on my machine that we used there to show how to set the priorities? On the left hand side we have the priorities that we set to my various logical partitions in priority order. And on the right hand side we have how much CPU is allocated to them. Now my machine is a 4 CPU machine, it's a 570. And if a CPU failed, well just by luck nothing would happen at all. Because if you add up all the CPU used, it actually comes to 3 CPUs and so we can survive without actually deallocating anything. If however my AX 5.2 partition was up, remember AX 5.2 can't use shared processors. So it's going to be a dedicated partition and it would use a whole CPU and that would be the first one that would be deallocated. Now if I had two CPUs failed, somewhat unlikely, but if I did, then of course our three CPUs worth of shared CPU partitions here wouldn't actually run. So what would actually happen? We'd actually go up this list of logical partitions and we'll find that they're all shared CPU partitions and taking a CPU out would actually take them all below the minimum. So then we'd come back down to the bottom of the list and deallocate enough shared processor logical partitions to actually stop them and free up the CPU to find a free CPU. And in this case the three AX 5.3 development partitions that adds up to a whole CPU, so those will get shut down, and the two CPUs will be used to run the VIO server and my two copies of AIX6, which is exactly what I want to run because I might have been running a demo at the time. 